Dr. Doreen Grand is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grand Dr. Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. My son is 14 uh, years, he's stimming, he's stimming a lot. Is there any way we can bring it down? When, we, when a demand is placed, he gets aggressive. We have ABA come home still. He is aggressive now and then. Yeah, so, um, so there's two, I'm just taking notes because I don't want to forget either one. So there's two separate things here, a self-stimulatory behavior, which we also refer to as stimming. Um, has a different function than a, aggressive behavior that increases due to demand. And I'll explain what that means. Um, with the self stimulatory behavior, you'd need to um, identify, um, oh, did I lose you there? Or nope, I'm you... here. Okay, great. Here. Um, you need to identify other types of behaviors that would replace that behavior, both in function and in form. So um, depending on what it is, and you can tell us more, I can give you some ideas about how to try to uh, replace those types of behaviors. For example, if the self stimulatory behavior includes hands, then you would want to give activities that prevent the hands from freely flapping. Uh, so these are uh, behaviors and, and other activities that prevent the self stimulatory behavior from happening. Um, but that aside, the, the issue of the child uh, getting angry and showing aggression when a demand is placed is a very, very common thing. And that is basically um, what, what we call escape maintained behavior. And that generally means that if every time a demand is placed and the child doesn't wanna follow through with that demand, uh, if they aggress towards others, then the typical reaction from others is to back off and not force the demand. So the child then, our kids are intelligent, uh, figures out very quickly that if I don't want to do anything, something that they ask of me, all I have to do is be aggressive. And uh, so that aggression is, is actual communication. It's the child saying, leave me alone. I don't want to deal with this. And so I, I, I think you said the child is 14. And that makes it a little bit harder. That's why a lot of these interventions are a little bit easier to manage when the child is younger. So um, at 14, though, it's still the same treatment. Essentially, when the aggression occurs, the answer is, now, the practicality is a different issue, but the answer is that you must follow through with the demand and actually physically help the child carry through with the demand. Now you can make the demand easier. You can certainly make it an easier demand and you must reinforce the, the follow through a great deal. So uh, let's say you ask the child to do something. You can make it a very simple request, an easier version of what you were asking and any kind of, uh, kind of attempt on the on your son's um, part to actually carry through and follow through and do what you're asking should be heavily rewarded, right? But if there is aggression, you should not reward. And if there is aggression, you should not back off. That's the issue with uh, reteaching our kids how to not use aggression as a form of communication. Now, on the other hand, you should also teach your child separately how to ask for a break or how to say, I don't want to do that right now. Um, and it doesn't have to be vocal. It could also be touching an icon that is, a, you know, shows time out. So um, there are things that you do where you essentially start to reward the child using normal, typical, healthy communication, either language or iconic to tell you uh, that they don't want to do something and you do not reward aggression or tantrums or other challenging behaviors as a form of communication. That is what a typical ABA program sets up to do. And, and we do that with all of our kids, whether they're two or 14. 
Wonderful, thank you. We're getting down to the end and I wanna squeeze in a bunch of questions all at once. So I'm gonna rapid fire at you. Somebody wants to know, is it negative attention seeking or a sensory issue? How do you demarcate? For example, screaming. How would you tell if it's negative attention seeking or a sensory issue? It's a good it's question. Awesome. It's a very good question. Uh, I mean, the easiest answer to that is, does it happen alone when the child is alone? Because if the child is doing it when they're alone, then it's a sensory thing. And if they're doing it uh, when someone is around, then it's more likely an attention thing because then they can get the attention of the person. Uh, sensory is one of those terms that we use when it's not one of the typical functions that we can identify. And the typical functions that we can identify usually involve another person, either giving attention or another object, gaining access to an object or an activity or something like that. Thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.